Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek, and um, I'm in, your instructor for uh, this class here. I might use this video for more than one class, um, but I'm going to show you in general how to get started with this class. So basically, we're going to set up um, a virtual, what I call virtual class development boxes uh, in this video. This video is mostly for, win is, is for Windows operating systems people. Uh, if you're on a Mac, I might make another video, but the, the instructions are basically the same. We just have to um, uh, install three pieces of, of software, and all three of these, whether you're on um, Windows or Mac, uh, there are standard um, installers for your system, okay? So I'm going to show on a Windows in this video, so we need to get the Git client, G-I-T, and then we need to get VirtualBox and Vagrant, okay? And for the most part, we just need to keep all the defaults. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to uh, clone our class repository. I'm using my uh, data structures and algorithms 2336 class uh, as an example uh, in this video. So if, if you're in a different class, everything might be the same. The only difference might be I'll give you a different repository, so you'd have a different name for the class repository here. So basically, once you install these things uh, and you get your repository, then you can create one of these virtual um, boxes for you to use for the assignments and things for our class, okay? Um, so yeah, like I said, I've got a standard Windows system here, a relatively new install. I mostly removed um, all my stuff here. So first of all, let me show you um, the URL uh, that you need um, for this particular class, for the, the COSC 2336 uh, Data Structures and Algorithms class. Uh, hmm, being a little bit slow here. So um, I've got this repository on Bitbucket. So if you just go to bitbucket.org, try to dharder, is my username on there, and uh, and then the uh, the name of the class repository, whatever whatever I gave it for you. So in this example, it's the COSC two three three six class repository. So that'll bring it up. Um, I've got more detailed um, uh, README instructions here, which is why I'm going to bring this up. So we're going to follow these instructions um, from the README here, okay? Um, so we're going to need to do some things from the command line. So I think I have a link to this on here. So uh, while I'm waiting for this to load here, so, so these are the uh, on the front page of this, there'll always be a README. Um, so the very first day or two of class, you should jump in here to the getting started and uh, follow these instructions, basically, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I've actually already downloaded these, but I haven't installed them. So um, um, I will install these uh, here, um, although I'm going to have to pause the video and come back, okay? So the first thing we need is Git, the, the Git client, G-I-T, okay? So Git, if you don't know what it is... Um, is software, it's, it's, it's mainly meant for um, collaborating, pe uh, groups of, of people to collaborate on building software, but also building any kind of a project, so you can do other kinds of files rather than programs, you know, documents and things like that. So so if you're on Windows, you want to come in here and grab um, the, the 64 Git uh, Windows setup, okay? Uh, you can get this from Mac, although in my video and in the instructions here, as I say, uh, so you could try this um, um, the the setup uh, there's a there's a download page for Mac um, so you could try the the installer from this here or you could um, um, use uh, the brew that I I mentioned okay um, so if you download that like I said I've already got it downloaded here so I should have it in my downloads let's go ahead and start that uh, basically. <clears throat> For all of these installations of these three things that we need, you can pretty much accept the defaults. The only exception is really for Git here. Um, so, so you want to go ahead and allow it to make changes to your system, uh, and then I'll show you. So accept, you know, let it let it install it where it wants. Um, you won't get this warning message. I installed it before I forgot to remove that, but then you shouldn't get any warning messages if, if you're installing Git for the first time. So if you've already got Git installed on your system, you don't have to reinstall it. So. Um, So you can let it use the default editor. So you, know, uh, you can let it, you do want it to adjust your path so it ends up on your path, but let it do the default one of using Git from the command line, okay? So, um, and then here is the one that I mentioned in the README instructions. So in, in terms of the configuring the line ending conversions, 
uh, use the, the checkout is as is and the commit as is because basically we're going to be setting up a Linux, Unix virtual box and if we allow it to convert to Windows style line feeds that can cause some problems. So uh, usually it's not a real big deal but, but uh, things uh, <coughs> we're, we're more likely for them to go completely smoothly if we go ahead and um, use that one, this third option here. Okay, uh, And then otherwise, you know, just go ahead and allow um, all these and go ahead and, and install it, okay? So we'll let that run. So while that's running, I'll come back to here. I began, uh, I was going to talk about uh, running things from the command line. So if you've never run something uh, from a DOS command prompt, uh, it, it's easy. I mean, you know, it's a command line interface um, that we need to use here for a few things. Um, you, you probably won't see it up here unless you use the command line before. So the easiest way to find it is just to, to bring this up and start typing. So in, in recent versions of Windows and most operating systems, when you bring up your start menu, um, uh, there's, there's a built-in sort of search function just that's activated by typing stuff, right? So if you type in command or prompt, um, you should find it, okay? And I usually like to right-click on that and just add that to my, pin it to my taskbar, what Windows calls the taskbar, uh, since I use that. I usually put all my most used programs down here on the taskbar, okay? So... Uh, one thing, you shouldn't open this up until after your installer is done because basically the installer will be modifying the path environment variable so it can find the command line tools that we want to use, the, the git tool in this case. Um, so we should let um, uh, th that, and, and if you install more multiple things, you'll want to actually close off any command prompts that you have open and then re-open um, new ones, okay? So... Um, so I'm debating whether I should pause my video or not. We're almost done here. So let's bring that over here so we can see when it finishes. Um, maybe I'll let that, uh, maybe I'll go ahead, but we'll come back as soon as that's done. We're almost done here. Um, so let me, let me talk about the VirtualBox tools. So VirtualBox is um, software for um, running virtual machines, okay? Um, so if you, if you click on the downloads here, um, it, it'll open up the, the page to download things on here. So I think we're done with Git now, so I'll go ahead and come back to this. Uh, we don't really want to view the release notes, and we should be done. Okay, so um, coming back to Git here, like I mentioned here, it's always a good idea to check that everything is installed correctly. So what we expect, if you start up a, a DOS command prompt, it'll start you in what's known as your home directory. So my username on the system is Dash, so your username will be different, uh, whatever you called yourself when you installed Windows, okay? Um, but you can run tools, um, command line tools, just from typing here. So uh, on, on Windows, we want to use the wit, which command. So this will tell us... Um, um, Uh, I'm sorry, we want to use the, the where command on Windows, so which is for Linux and, and Mac OS. So, um, yeah, if if, um, if you do a where, you should find it. It should find it in your path. So this means that this was added to your path so it could find the git tool. If you do a where on a command that doesn't exist, so if you do a where on git, but you instead get it that it couldn't find the files, forget. So if you get like this message instead, that means that something didn't, something wasn't correct when you installed it or your path didn't get set correctly. Okay. So, but, but if you have, if you found it, you should be able to run git commands. For example, we can ask it what version it is. Like git, that's two dashes there, dash dash version. Okay. So, um, as of the making of this video, we, we're using version 2.27 of Git, okay? So you should have probably 2.27 or, or um, a later version, right? So, so it should work as long as it's 2.27 or, or uh, past that uh, that you install, okay? Um, so Git is installed correctly. So like I said, um, you should go ahead and close off these terminals, uh, you know, uh, before you install new stuff. Um, because if, if your path environment variable gets modified, it won't have it inside of an already open up terminal. So you have to start up a new one anyway. All right? So um, as I began talking about, VirtualBox is a set of virtualization tools that allow you to run virtual machines. Okay, 
Um, and um, a, a note, I mean, you, you probably need a laptop with at least four gigabytes of memory to run some virtual machines. And, the, and then if you have four gigabytes, you can use two or three gigabytes for the virtual machine. Um, and you should have, well, I mean, you've got to have at least one CPU. It'd be nice to have a dual or a quad-core CPU so you could at least give, like, two CPUs. Right? But I, I find it runs okay with two gigabytes and one CPU. Um, but but if you have more, you can you can uh, do more. Okay, so so for Windows, you want to bring up that um, and download for the Windows hosts. Okay, for for Mac OS, you'd want to get the OS X hosts. Okay, um, and I've already installed VirtualBox, so then it's a, it's a standard installer for Windows. So you double click. Um, and it'll run the installer for you. This one, I don't think there's any defaults that you have to override. So once it starts running, you can just accept um, all the defaults of where it wants to install it. Uh, of course, if you don't want to create start menu, uh, menu entries or things, you can uncheck those. But um, you want to allow it to change your interfaces um, and go ahead and install it. Okay. So actually, VirtualBox is isn't really meant to be and and you know allow it to make those changes again. Okay? VirtualBox isn't really meant to be run from the command line as I talk a little bit about in my readme here. Um, so, But it has a, a GUI interface, so I'll bring that up. So that's one way you can check that it's installed correctly is you can bring up the GUI interface. Um, I, I, but you can also run um, this vboxmanage.exe, although it won't be added to your path, so you'll have to specify the full name, um, but you can just copy and paste this uh, if you want to. So I'll just go ahead and copy that because I'm going to bring a, a command line once this is, is done installing here uh, and paste that in there to, to check that um, VirtualBox was installed. Okay. So there, uh, you could go ahead and allow it to start, you know, but um, um, I'll finish that off. Okay. So like I said, VirtualBox uh, is, is actually meant to be run. It has a GUI front end, um, so you can bring it up and search for virtual, for example. Um, and and then, yeah, you should have this Oracle via VirtualBox. Uh, again, I usually like to pin that to my taskbar, um, and you can start that up, right? Um, so this is just a regular, you know, uh, Windows um, application. Um, you won't have any virtual machines created. I've got one already here that I created before, but um, but yeah, you shouldn't have anything in here. But yeah, go ahead and close that off and start up a new terminal. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, you won't be able to use the where because this isn't on your path. So if you looked for where VBox manage, uh, it won't be able to find it. But but it did install these things, or it should have. So, so if we actually copy this, oh, by the way, these dollar signs or this this right arrow are meant to be the prompt. So the stuff you type at the command lines uh, is really the stuff after the, the prompt character there. So if I can, if I copy that, um, and I think it's just Control V uh, into my terminal, um, it should find that. And, and again, we just run ran the version, right? So yeah, you should have version six point one point twelve or something later, basically, if you install that graph. But everything looks good if you if you can get your GUI up and do that, um, right? So that's VirtualBox. Um, after you install VirtualBox and Vagrant, you should reboot your system. So I'm not going to be able to show that in this video here. But um, um, so the next thing you need is Vagrant. So Vagrant is another virtualization tool. It's for um, managing virtual machines from a command line. So it helps you uh, provision them more easily and, and install them and create them. Um, so yeah, you should you should open that link up, um, and it'll, I, I think it auto detects your operating system. So if you're on Windows, it'll bring you right to a downloads and and and, and give you an option to download a Windows. Um, and if you're Mac OS, it, it'll probably bring you to the Mac OS one to to download the installer for Mac OS. Um, so yeah, notice these are regular DMG um, installers for Mac OS. So um, anyway. Um, I can't remember these, these, and this is a .msi, which is also another type of standard installer for Windows here. So, uh, so this might take a little bit of time. You, you know, you want to accept the license, allow it to install in the default location, um, and go ahead and install it there. So, um, like I said, um, I'm not going to actually be able to show you the reboot 
go ahead and, and allow it to, to make the changes. Um, and I might stop my video here, um, and I'm going to show you restart kind of my next steps from a slightly, well, that's not true. Um, I, I want to show you doing the git install um, from here as well once we're done with this. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, to talk about this, after you do these two steps, um, you should go ahead and reboot your system. And there's two things you should do. Well, there's one thing... Uh, you should do is, is reboot and, and check that you have um, virtualization install um, enabled. Okay, I think for a, a, um, if you have Mac hardware, you don't have to check this because it's always uh, enabled, or they uh, they don't really have that kind of an idea. Uh, but for Windows, it's a good idea to check. It's, pro it's probably enabled, but uh, you know you'll have to get into your BIOS. Uh, usually, it's the F2 key, but you can click on here, you know, to check, um, or, or you can look in, on your boot up screen. There'll usually be a message about which key to press to get in, into your BIOS. Then you'll want to find your CPU settings and look for uh, like either VT-X if you have like a Intel CPU, or I think it's called AMD-V if you're uh, an AMD CPU, and just make certain that's enabled. That that'll allow you to run virtual machines um, on your computer, basically. So. <clears throat> The other thing that I mentioned here, maybe I should have put these together, so you should probably do this before you reboot uh, as well on, on Windows. Both of these are really only need to be done on Windows machines. So for Mac OS, you, you just can just reboot again. Uh, but you should uh, disable this Hyper-V. Um, so it looks like it, it does call, cause problems. So open this up. There's some, some instructions here. Um, so what you want to do is just go to, I think it's the control panel, once this comes up here, um, uh, yeah, the control panel, uh, and, and the, the, there's, this, this is slightly misleading, but yeah, let me show you. So again, I usually just, you know, search for control to find my control panel um, and get that. Uh, so you actually have to go to, there's no programs and features, but you go to programs, and that's where you find the programs and features. So, so the, these instructions might be a little bit out of date that I had. Uh, and then from here, you'll find the turn windows features on and off on the left-hand side here, and that's where you'll get this pop-up window about the windows features. And then you just have to scroll down here to find the Hyper-V uh, right there, uh, the Hyper-V management tools, um, and then, um, I'm sorry, the Hyper-V platform is what you want to look into, Hyper-V platform. And then you want to make certain that this is dis disabled. So I've already got it disabled here, but um, um, make certain that's turned off. If it's not, if it's enabled, turn that off and say, okay, um, right, uncheck it. All right. So, so, yeah, you should probably do that before you reboot um, um, as well. So once you do that, and then on the reboot, uh, check your, um, <coughs> excuse me, check your, um, um, your bio settings that you've got virtualization enabled here. So. Um, okay, and I think we're almost done here, so... Maybe I'll go ahead and wait. Um, so, okay, um, let me uh, let me start moving on to the next thing here. So, the the next thing we're going to do is actually clone our class repository um, um, after we install Vagrant and reboot. Okay, so this is actually the, the steps where we're going to actually start creating your um, virtual dev box here for the class. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is you want to create, or what I suggest, and, and you should follow this, is, is you need to create uh, a directory called, um, I actually, um, I need to change my um, instructions here. So I, I like to call it uh, boxes instead of repos uh, now. Okay, so uh, hopefully by the time you see this, I'll fix this here. So you need to find your home directory. Um, so if it's, if it's not showing up, um, uh, on your quick access, I think I added that, so you might not have it on your quick access. So you might have to search on your C drive, you know. Um, so you might have to go to like this PC, go to your C drive, <clears throat> go to users, uh, and then you'll find your user, what, whatever your username, with maybe some other things here. But but again, my username is Dash. Okay. So yeah, I usually like to add that to my quick access. So that, that's why I had that over my quick access here. 
Um, and then I'm going to create um, a directory called boxes. Okay. So you can create, uh, how do you create, um, I, I don't use Windows all that much. I can't remember exactly what the, um, what the command is to create, oh, there it is, a new folder. So I guess it's home, new folder, right? Um, or I think you can right click and do like new folder. I think that's what I normally do, right? So you can create your boxes here. Um, or I've already got a, a file called boxes, so so um, in, in my folder here, so that so didn't allow me to create that. Um, but but yeah, if you don't have a folder created called that, you should be able to create that. Uh, and that probably means I've already got uh, oh I've got a different box in there, so that won't interfere with us. So, um, so as I mentioned from my, you can also do these same things from the command prompt. So when you bring up a, a prompt, it starts you. Uh, in that home directory. So uh, from a DOS command prompt, you know, you've got other commands like DIR allows you to do a directory listing. So I should see these same files that I see here just listed out on my terminal, you know, uh, my, my desktop folder, my documents folder. Um, um, you know, you won't see all the same ones. Some of these are actually kind of virtual folders or links and things, but um, but I should also see my repos and boxes. But I can make directories as well. So I can do like a make directory. Um, let's call it boxes other, right? So I can create another directory called boxes other if I wanted to. So now I should see, if I go back to my file browser, I've got a boxes, uh, but I should have like a boxes other uh, in here as well. Let me resort these by name so we get them together. So yeah, there's, there's the boxes other. All right, so these are just different views into the same file system, right? So, um, so yeah, I mean, Vagrant isn't quite installed yet, but uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, um, move on here. So so you shouldn't do this until after you get Vagrant installed. Um, but um, um, once you create your boxes directory, then you should change into it. So so this next step where you do the clone of the repository needs to be done from the terminal. So you should change directory into the boxes, right? Uh, and if you just created, you won't have anything in there, right? Um, and then, um, I'm, I'm moving this here so I can do a copy and paste. So then you want to do this copy and paste. So when you do a clone of a Git repository, it's basically just downloading the files, okay? So all of your files for class assignments and tests and examples and things, um, uh, I've currently got in the repository for this class. So, so if, when, once you clone this, you'll have all this, plus also the files for setting up your virtual uh, dev box for the class, okay? So, so control C to copy it um, and come back here, control V uh, back into your um, into your uh, command line terminal, right? So this will copy the file. So the result of doing this will be um, that we will end up with a, a new subdirectory in our boxes directory. Let me add that to my favorites as well, my boxes directory. Um, so yeah, you can you can see it already, although it hasn't finished uh, downloading <clears throat> all the files, receiving the files yet. But inside of boxes, there's going to be a, a new subfolder, which holds all the files for your class um, repository, right? The COSC, the, my class in this example video is the COSC two three three six DS dash ALG. Okay. So. Um, all right, and then the next step, though, is, is you know, uh, we really need to finish getting Vagrant, um, and then we want to, when this is finished, we want to change into there um, and actually bring up your virtual box, okay? But both of these are still going, so I'm going to pause my video at this point and come back, uh, and then we'll come back and kind of finish up the Vagrant um, and finish up um, um, cloning and getting started with provisioning our um, virtual dev box, all right? <clears throat> Okay, um, we're back here. I'm done uh, installing things here. Um, so, so, so Vagrant uh, has finished up. Um, so, like I said, you know, you, you do have to re reboot your system after you get VirtualBox and Vagrant um, um, installed. So, I'm not, I'm not going to reboot here. Um, 
Another thing I'll show here, so I had this terminal open before Vagrant changed my path, so most likely, uh, you know, if, if I tried to do these commands like uh, uh, like this, uh, even though it installed correctly, you're going to be scratching your head saying, why can't it find it, you know? Um, it's not, uh, and if you look at your path, you'll find that it's not there on your path environment. But again, that's because this terminal was open, and uh, you won't see changes in terminals um, unless you reopen a new terminal to get, you know, a, a new uh, path environment variable. So if I, if I open a new terminal, I should successfully see that Vagrant was installed um, and that um, we can um, check the version. Okay. So as of the making of this video, um, <clears throat> or version 2.2.9, so you should have that version or uh, a later one uh, <clears throat> if you're doing things from for this class, for, you know, from these videos. So. Okay, so that was basically it for our getting the three tools that you need installed. Okay, uh, let me take a step back though. So uh, I'm, I, I made a mistake. We really should think of these as repositories, and not boxes. Okay, so so the, what I have what I have here in the README is actually correct. Okay, so let me just redo this. So so I do recommend that you do that you make a directory called repos, not boxes. Okay, and that you clone into there. So I, I've already got a directory called repos. So I'm going to reclone here, and I might pause my, my video uh, again. And I've got I've already got a few repositories, so I usually put um, source code, you know, Git repositories into my repos directory. All right, um, but yeah, I, I recommend that you clone um, into uh, uh, the file called re repos. All right, um, and uh, let me go ahead and let that clone again, and I'll pause and then uh, come back after this is cloned, and, and we'll. Um, we'll show the next steps here, okay? All right, so uh, once it's done cloning um, uh, the files in your repository, um, like I said, you'll get a subdirectory called, uh, you know, the, the name of your class, so the name of the repository, so in this case it's COSC 2336 -2. DS-ALG for data structures and algorithms class, right? Um, and you know you should see um, that subdirectory in your home repos, right? But now if you look in there after it's done, you'll see that there's a bunch of files in there. So the next step um, that I like I talked about here, you want to change into that directory. So you want to make certain that that's your current directory. So change directory into um, CUSC 2336, all right? Uh, and then from here, the next step we're going to do is do the vagrant up, okay? So I'm going to stop the video here because um, I'm going to show this in a slightly different place. I'm actually running this video in kind of a virtual machine, so it's kind of tough to install a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine. But um, um, so yeah, let me go ahead and stop and restart this. Uh, we'll be in a slightly different environment, but the steps will be the same here once we restart. So. Okay, um, so uh, I had to switch to a slightly different environment, but the commands will be the same here. So if you need to be in that, you know, your current directory from your command line prompt, whatever command line you're using, um, needs to be in that um, repository directory that we just uh, cloned, right? Um, so at this point, you want to do a vagrant up, V-A-G-R-A-N-T space up, okay? What this does is this starts up, boots up the virtual machine uh, that's configured in this um, directory here according to the vagrant file, okay? Um, and it's going to um, install a bunch of software. So this is called the this is what's known as provisioning the the virtual box. All right. Um, so in this case, it's going to install a standard Linux desktop. It's going to put a bunch of um, of um, of editors in there and a bunch of development tools. So compilers, uh, editors, uh, code formatters, and things like that. Okay. So we're going to be using those tools, uh, linkers, and things um, for this class basically. All right. 
Um, so again, I'm going to have to pause the video, so I just want to describe what will happen here. So this might take some time. So this first step uh, is going to go real quickly for me because I've already downloaded the base box, but you'll have to download the base box from the internet first of an Ubuntu um, um, version 20 Ubuntu here. So, so it might take 20, 30 minutes, depending on your download speed, to get this. And then once you get past this step, um, it'll actually boot up the virtual machine. Uh, okay, so, so, um, so um, and, and what will come up is a window um, of, 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 the, um, of the virtual machine running inside of it, basically. So the, the boot process of the virtual machine here. Okay. You shouldn't, uh, in, in a while here, again, I'll probably pause the video maybe before it gets to this point, but um, uh, in a while here, I'll come up with a login prompt, but you shouldn't look, try and log in um, because it's going to be installing a bunch of stuff. So, again, it'll take another 20, 30, maybe longer minutes uh, to, to, to download and install a bunch of software, right? So don't try logging in until you see uh, over here in your terminal um, that it's done doing stuff. Um, and don't get too alarmed. So there will be warnings, maybe even some errors, okay? Um, but as I mentioned in the README, um, and as I'll show once this is finished here, uh, if you get a message at the end that things were installed um, and the desktop is running, then you're probably okay, all right? Uh, but let that, let that go, you know, it'll take some time. Uh, it'll take some time before you get up to this point, before you see this boot up, uh, to download the base image, and then after it does that, it'll take some more time to, to download things. So, um, so again, I'll pause at this point, and I'll come back um, and show finishing up um, a few things and how you get into the virtual box and stuff. So. Okay, um, we're I'm done with the uh, initial vagrant up to provision the vagrant. Uh, uh, class development box, okay? So when you get done, you should see a message down here that the class dev box was successfully installed and the desktop is running, okay? Um, and it will actually halt or shut down the machine because it needs a reboot to make certain that everything works. You probably shouldn't see these errors like this, but uh, if you do, um, I mean, you know, it may or may not be an issue. Um, I was just working on some things here. Uh, you can always um, like uh, copy and paste these, maybe an email to me if you have a question about them, right? Um, so, um, and, and your, your GUI, your, your desktop that was up should go away if it successfully halts, okay? So, um, I'm just going to quickly then show you a few quick things um, about using uh, your dev box. Uh, so when, if it successfully installs provisions and successfully shuts down, you should do a vagrant up again. This will just bring it back up, but it doesn't have to install anything, so it should come up relatively quickly uh, the second time you do a vagrant up, okay? So yeah, you should see your um, desktop pop up. Um, it'll boot up. Uh, you'll see a bunch of messages scroll by. Um, but relatively quickly it should come back to your your desktop again okay so the system should be um, set up to automatically log you into your desktop so you don't have to enter in a username and password um, as I mentioned in the readme for the class there are two users you're going to be logged in as the vagrant user which is what you'll do most of your stuff with so the vagrant user has a username of vagrant v-a-g-r-a-n-t with a password of vagrant um, if you want to install uh, some new software inside of your um, class dev box, uh, you might have to use the Ubuntu user, which is set up as the super user. Um, so actually both Vagrant and Ubuntu are set up for super user. So if you need to use the Ubuntu, uh, the username is Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U, -U, with a password of Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. -U, okay. So some things to look out for when it reboots. Um, it should be forwarding port 22 correctly, okay? Uh, but another very important thing is you want to see this line here. So this tells me uh, when I see this that it's correctly sharing your home directory. So your home directory, um, you know, again, this will be this one over here. This will be uh, depending on, you know, your system. Uh, your host machine, the, the, your actual computer operating system, your Windows operating system. 
uh, this should be the repository that you cloned into, right? And, and, and this says that it's being shared with your virtual box here, that uh, probably in a different video I'll show you more about that, okay? So when you first run this, uh, it has a few little things that you need to set up. Um, so before I set that up, let me, let me mention, um, so I, I want to go through these points here, um, resizing the screen initial configuration. Uh, I already mentioned the default users and passwords, um, and then cleanly shutting down the box, okay? So you shouldn't resize this by taking a, a corner and dragging, um, so some virtual uh, machines, the, the video drivers have some issues doing that, okay? So in this case, uh, instead, so if you do that, I, I don't think it'll crash or anything, but you'll see it'll take a long time to do that, okay? So instead, you should either use a uh, view full screen mode, which is what I normally do, um, or um, if you won't, don't want to do it full screen, you can use like a set one of these standard sizes. So the resize works much, much better if you set it to one of the sizes that the video driver um, wants to, to drive the, the virtual desktop at, okay? So I'm going to use a... Um, um, uh, 1920 by 1080. I think that should be so we should be able to we should be able to see that in the video here if we do that. So let me resize that. Uh, bring that up here. Actually, I'm not certain if you can completely see the bottom of my screen. Um, yeah, let me make that just a little bit smaller. Let me do the next size lower than that. So let's try. 1680 by 1050. So there, you should definitely be able to see all that um, on my on your screen here. So um, okay, so for the initial setup, um, I mean, you know, th this is just running as virtual box, so you probably don't really need to set up all these things. So you, so you can just go next on all these. Um, you know, inside of a virtual box, I usually don't send these system info reports. You know, so okay. So with that, you've got your virtual desktop um, set up here, okay? Um, so, uh, like I said, it, 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 real quickly in this video, maybe I'll, I'll just show, um, I usually kind of remove these things that I don't use, so, you know, the email client, um, the music player from inside the virtual box really isn't useful. Um, these things. Um, I do have um, a bunch of editors set up, so th th there'll be one editor that I'll be recommending that you actually use for this class, uh, but uh, there are a bunch of other ones you could try out, or, or we might switch to other ones. So the VI, VIM is actually on there, so I, I normally like to, you know, if you go on, if you click on activities, uh, you can search for things that are installed. And then I usually, again, right-click on these and add these to my um, favorites, so I have these over here. So, so we do have VI. Um, we do have Emacs installed. We do have um, Sublime Editor installed, Sublime Text. Um, and we've got the Atom Editor. Uh, I had some problems with that one, but you'll have the Atom Editor and also Visual Studio Code, uh, which I'm, which is going to be the editor I'm going to recommend that we use probably for this, most likely for the class that you're watching this video for. So, all right. So you might want to add um, at least the Sublime Editor. Maybe some of these others you can try them out. Okay. Oh, and, and you might want to add a command line terminal as well. Um, to your favorites, so, so bring that up and right click and, and add the terminal to your favorites. Okay. So in the next video, um, I'll show using some things with the terminal and also with the Visual Studio editor. Okay. But yeah, this brings up a Unix Linux command line that you can run commands from and, and, and do things. So. Um, all right, and so that's your desktop. Um, and then one final thing for shutting this down, so when you're done working, uh, you know, you might want to make certain that any editors that have things that you're editing are saved and maybe close them out. Uh, you should either use the vagrant halt command 
Um, so you, so uh, from your host machine, you can always do a vagrant halt. This will this will shut down things cleanly. Okay. Or alternatively, uh, you shouldn't. Uh, Why well, I mentioned this, you probably shouldn't use the the shutdown. This is like hitting the red power button. So that, that's not a good way to halt the machine. Um, so from inside of your virtual uh, dev box host, you can do, uh, if you click over here on the right hand side, um, um, you, you can bring up your settings to, to configure some things, um, but um, you can also shut down your machine from here. So, so you can power off uh, from here. This is another clean way to, to power it off, okay? Um, so yeah, oops, when that goes away, um, your machine will be down, all right? Um, so that's basically it. Uh, if, if you got your desktop up like that and, and were able to see those editors and things and, and run a terminal, you successfully have your dev box uh, set up and are ready to work with the class. So at this point, you should uh, go on to the next videos where I show uh, how to actually work with class assignments and things for this class. Okay, so that's it for this video, and I will see you um, in the next video then.